Welcome everybody to the podcast. I'm Bailey. And I'm Trent. This is Crucifying Addiction. And today we got uh, something special for y'all. Trent, why don't you share on what that is? Yeah, uh, a few weeks ago, I was with my recovery group on a Saturday morning. And I got permission to record a little snippet of something that we were talking about. I thought it was really good. And I figured we could kind of bring it to you guys and leave you with a encouraging word for the next week. Sound good? Sounds good. All right, let's hear it out. Of life. I grew up uh, pulling trays out from underneath the mom, dad's couch, and I knew that's how they cope with life. You know, it's not like in a leave. Why do you take in a leave? Why do you take a, a you know, to a time to Yeah, to relieve pain. So you think about, you think about that pain, and pain being in different forms, and what medication do you use? It's easy. CBD, yeah. So I'm using something to cope and deal with the pain when I could just wake up and learn how to deal with it instead of relying on something to soothe me or to calm me. Okay. (laughs) That was very short. But in a nutshell, Chris Hopper was talking about using an Aleve to deal with, like, you know, a headache, right? When we're in some type of pain, we are going to take something. We're going to do something to alleviate that pain, you know? And so I think today we should just kind of have a quick talk about pain, right? Yeah. Bailey, what kind of what kind of pain do you get? In what way? What hurts, man? Well, I mean, just quick and easy. Uh, when I work out, just about everything. <laughs> just about everything hurts. Uh, okay, and you get sore? <laughs> oh, yeah. Especially if I don't stretch, everything hurts even more and I get sore even more. Okay. So is it true that if you like work out, that helps relieve soreness? For me? Yeah. Uh, so so you know. work out and then two days later you're feeling sore. If you work out again, it doesn't feel that sore anymore? During it doesn't really feel that sore. But after... From experience, I would argue that it, it does make you feel more sore, honestly. So then it gets worse. Yeah. So do you think then, if you worked out again, it would relieve some of that soreness? Possibly. Uh, I mean, because you got to think about it. So like, say I work out on Monday, so then I'm sore Tuesday. But I work out on Tuesday too, so then I'm sore Wednesday. All right, so I'm just a little bit more sore than I was Tuesday, but that pain that like it still kind of wears off a little bit. It doesn't just keep building up. You know, your body's still healing, so that soreness goes down a little bit and then builds back up. Goes down a little bit, builds back up. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like yeah, like uh, kind of like watching porn. Yes. The next day I feel shame, but if I feel if I reach out and grab more of that, it'll help me forget about the guilt and the shame. Mm -hmm. But then. The next day, I feel more guilt, more shame. Even though I'm piling on shame, I keep pushing mm-hmm. it back into tomorrow. Yeah. Well, I mean, even then, like, you don't feel shame the whole day, right? You feel shame just right after, I would say, for maybe half the day. Mm-hmm. And then the rest of the day, you don't feel shame, mm-hmm. right? And then the next day, you do it again, and then you feel even more guilt because you did it the day before because it's reminding you. You know what I'm trying yeah, to say? Yeah. So, so it's yeah. like, like with soreness, you know, um, uh, when I do when I do tons of calf raises on Monday, and I, I worked out really hard with my legs. I did a whole bunch of calf raises. I've had many experiences with this one. This is the worst. Um, you do a whole lot of calf raises, and after you're fine. You know, but I mean, it hurts and then you're fine for a little bit and then you wake up the next day and it's just the worst. You have a, the hardest time just standing up. It hurts so bad. And then after you walk for a little bit, then the pain goes away. And then as soon as you sit down and you start working out your calves again, and once you step, step, stand back up, it starts to hurt again. If you don't give your calves time to heal... Don't you put yourself at a pretty big risk of injury? Mm-hmm. Yes. So like the weekend. So people, most people work out five days out of the week, and then Saturday and Sunday, they'll mm-hmm. take off. So there's perfectly acceptable situations where 
we take something to solve our problem. If I have the flu, I could take some medicine, get some rest, and get over it. But now, if I'm feeling anger, there's nothing that I can healthily take on this planet and put inside of me that's going to be the best response. Mm -hmm. You know, they used to, uh, there's a phrase, drink the poison and hope you die, is what it's like to be an alcoholic. You know, just drinking at everything. Lost my car, lost my house, and just drink, drink, drink. What Chris was kind of talking about is what we have to do is we have to feel. We have to deal with it without numbing ourselves to it. Mm -hmm. And this is about step one. Step one being kind of admitting powerlessness over dependencies. And the addiction cycle is made up of five parts. The first one is pain. So when we're going through pain, like life is pain. No, There is not a solution on this planet where you can go through life without pain. Mm -hmm. Working out. Getting cussed out. Feeling some type of embarrassment. You know? Um, just failing. Or even succeeding and losing people along the way in success. Like, there's just pain in everything that you do. Mm -hmm. So that is that is always going to be there. But what we do next depends on whether we're going to live in a God cycle or the addiction cycle. See, the second thing, pain leads to reaching out to an addictive agent. Work, food, sex, alcohol, dependent relationships to solve our pain. Mm -hmm. Right? If I can just work, then I don't have to deal with all this stuff going on at home. Right? Yeah. He's got a workaholic now. And what happens? I mean, these things, people don't do these things for no reason. People don't drink and do drugs for no reason. It's a solution to the pain. If I just get high, if I just have this seriously unhealthy, toxic relationship that totally distracts me from everything else because it takes everything that I have to deal with it, right? Uh, it's temporary anesthesia from the pain. I'm not feeling that pain. When I'm at work, working hard, I'm not worried about what's going on at home. It's temporary anesthesia. So that's the third one. And you know what temporary anesthesia does? It leads to negative consequences because we're not rightfully dealing with the pain. Mm -hmm. That leads to negative consequences. All of a sudden, those relationship problems at home get worse because I stay at work. I just stay at work and stay temporarily anesthesia and eventually there's nobody at the house well to uh correlate that back to the working out i mean uh the temporary would be to just lay down and not do anything right so you're sore you just lay down and not do anything no you want to stretch because stretching actually helps your body heal mm. you know uh I mean, stretching does so much, so many things, you know, it creates room for your muscles to grow. It creates flexibility for you to do better things, be able to always touch your toes, bend down, pick up trash when it shouldn't be there. So many different things, right? So the rightful way of solving your soreness would be to stretch. Of course, you're still going to feel that pain of soreness, but you're solving it the right way by stretching. The temporary way, which, yeah, temporary way would to be just lay there and not do anything. Not move your muscles. Mm -hmm. That way you don't feel that soreness. And what would be the negative consequences? The negative consequences? Uh, the next time you work out, it's not going to feel that great. <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, not going to see as much improvement. Yeah, you're not going to see as much as improvement. And I'm literally calling myself out on this, you know? But you're not going to see as much of improvement as you would like to, you know. You see very little, but it's not going to be as good as it would be if you were to stretch every single time mm. you worked out. So Even the, on your days off. The last thing that completes the addiction cycle. You got pain, reaching out for worldly things, mm -hmm. 
for temporary anesthesia, that's three. Negative consequences, just another example. I mean, if I'm, you know, uh, watching porn, that's going to affect the relationships in my life. Yeah. Drastically. It's going to affect the lens that I look through when I'm just going about my everyday life. It totally just damages that, right? Negative consequences, which close the gap. Number five, shame and guilt. Those negative consequences (laughs) bring on more (laughs) shame and guilt, which result in more pain and low self-esteem. And then I'm back at pain again, Mm -hmm. right? And there's the cycle. See, when I reach out for things outside of myself to do that temporary anesthesia, I will find myself in negative consequences because I'm I'm not I'm not dependent on God on this. And then those negative consequences will bring more pain, which now I need more stuff to cover more pain for more anesthesia for more negative consequences. It just keeps going and going. Cycle, 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 cycle. Yeah. And that I know that was a very short clip of what Chris was saying, but I thought that that is very powerful. Mm-hmm. Want to hear it again? Let's hear it one more time. Well, why did I use it? Well, because it was a part of life. I grew up uh, pulling trays out from underneath the mom, dad's couch. And I knew that's how they coped with life. You know, it's not like in a leave. Why do you take in a leave? Why do you take a, a, you know, a time? Yeah, to relieve pain. So you think about, you think about that pain and pain being in different forms. And what medication do you use? Well, it's easy. CBD, yeah. So I'm using something to cope and deal with the pain when I could just wake up and learn how to deal with it instead of relying on something to soothe me or to calm me. So what is the right way to cope and deal with that pain? Mm. Mm. Step one is admitting powerlessness. Like... Mm -hmm. I was born into this world and all I have at my disposal and through my worldly view is the world, which is the food, sex, drugs, relationship dependencies. But I am a spiritual being and this is a spiritual issue. Mm -hmm. So what I need is a spiritual solution, Mm. which is God. So step one being powerless over our dependencies. Step two is believing that power greater than ourselves, God can restore us to sanity see what i did in response to my pain ended up bringing me more pain i'm doing it again i'm gonna i'm gonna do more of that same thing and i get more pain and that's insane when i look back through my life and think about how i handled pain which the lord said this life you will experience much pain Mm mm-hmm this, this, there is no promise at all that there will not be pain in this world. The trials and tribulation. Mm-hmm. So, what am I going to do with that pain? You know, and that's a decision I have to decide, right? And it's really that simple of a decision. When I am in pain, am I going to go to my father and ask him to help me get through it? Because he didn't say that I will take away your pain. He will be there to care for us and comfort us and guide us through. Really, I think that we can live a life that has less pain because Mm -hmm. a lot of my pain could have been avoided. And I could have been a lot more prepared for the pains that I had no control over. But I had had control over a lot of that pain because I caused it for myself. Mm. That right and wrong that you were that you were created to have in you all along will be there, so that when you experience that pain, you can get that little nudge that says, "Hey, talk to somebody. All right, call a friend. You don't have to pick that up anymore." Mm-hmm. But it it's a walk. It's a walk that at first is slow and really difficult. At first, because it means you're. <laughs> You're like learning how to walk again, you know. It's yeah, it's not going to be easy. You no, know, it's a whole new thing. You need an accountability partner. Yeah, so amen. Somebody who's been there, done that, and doing it with God. That can show you how to do it, mm-hmm. and that you can be completely honest with. Share it. All right. Um, in Matthew nine, it talks about uh the needs for workers. 
Jesus traveled through all the towns and villages of that area, teaching in the synagogues and announcing the good news about the kingdom, and healed every disease and illness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were confused and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. He said to his disciples, The harvest is great, but the workers are few. So pray to the Lord who is in charge of the harvest. Ask him to send more workers into his fields. Amen. The harvest is great. There are people everywhere around you you don't even know struggling with something. Mm -hmm. God has a purpose for your pain. So he took what the enemy meant for our death and destruction and is using it for our good. God is so cool like that. Yeah. He's yeah. like, dude, instead of just getting rid of it, I'm going to use it to your advantage to actually help people who are also struggling with the same exact thing. Yeah. The Bible shows us that if God has God has just taken away troubles mm -hmm. and we just take it for granted every time. Yeah, and it says to re, I mean, renew your mind every day and take up your cross daily, mm -hmm. right? There's many sheep, uh, sheep without a shepherd. Guess who that shepherd is? Jesus Christ, our yes, Lord sir. and Savior, right? The harvest is great, but the workers are few. That's what it says. And you're called to be a worker. Mm -hmm. I'm called to be a worker. Yeah. Everyone experiencing pain? How do you? What's the right way? Become a worker. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hey, you were harvest at one point. Now, become a worker. I think this is a a great point to leave off of. And uh, guys, I mean, this is completely different than what we've done, but we have talked about doing something like this, and uh, we hope to do another one. And we hope y'all like this. Um, Table talk. We're calling this one Table Talk, yeah? Yeah. Uh, Trent, would you like to pray us out, man? Sure, sure. Lord, Heavenly Father, thank you for your son who came to, to take away uh, the sin of the world. Thank you that we get to experience pain. Thank you for uh, the joy that you give us to go through in that pain when we know that we can be an example of what pain Jesus went through as he was getting it all for us. Every whip, every lash, every cuss, every drop of blood, we fully deserved. And he took on that pain so that we can have everlasting life and there will be a day without pain. But until then, we use this pain in remembrance of of the suffering that you went through and to take others with us along the way. And we don't have to reach out uh, to all of these lies of uh, pain relievers, these things that say that they're going to take away pain. Um, I pray that all those that are listening can, can start now and don't pick up your solution, but pick up the solution and find your joy, find your peace, find your love in Christ Jesus. And pray this all in his name. Amen. Hi, I'm Bailey. And I'm Trent. Thank you so much for listening to this new episode. Yeah, hit the subscribe button. And like. And leave comments. And if you really liked it, share it with somebody. Tune in to this next episode. We got something special for you. I'm excited.